Today on Houston Life, the nominations are in for the Golden Globes. From movies to television to streaming, which of your favorite shows could be taking home the gold? And have you heard of slugging? Nope. The moisturizing technique that's trending on TikTok. It's not at all what I thought it would be. Find out how safe it is from an expert. Plus, it's Wine Club Wednesday. How does football and wine sound to you as a parent? Perfect. Whether you love it red or white, we've got game day wine pairings with tasty bottles under just 15 bucks. And we're continuing to spotlight Houston's black history with a look at the first black missionary Baptist church built by freed slaves. All that and more happening today on Houston Life. <laughs> Is that for real? Oh. Live from Studio B at KPRC Channel 2, Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Houston Life. It is Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021. I'm Derek Shore. They try to punk us every day. It says 2020 in the prompter, <laughs> literally every single day. But you know what? It's it's information that remains in the rundown, so it's okay. What's a rundown? I don't know. Cheers to you. Cheers to you, and cheers to Kat, because she made sure that we had our vino at the top of the show. Our producer, Kat, is fantastic. We love her so much. And today's Wine Club Wednesday, which is her whole project, right? She produces it every week. And today, what's very exciting about Wine Club is we have several Houston Life viewers who will be joining us for the tasting. I gotta tell you, it's like Tom and Sandy Willis, our viewers who live at Love Eagles that. Trace. They're yeah. so much fun. And even though right now during COVID, we have not been able to get out into the community as we normally would, I feel like Wine Club is a great chance for us to meet and connect with some of our viewers. And these two that we have on today, longtime viewers, we're bringing it way back to the mall days and oh. they've got a really cool story about how they met and Paris and Moulin Rouge or something. I think they shared six bottles of wine the night they met. Mm, I can't wait to meet them. I Lots wonder if of they, good fun. If they remember the night they met. Anyway, those viewers <laughs> who are part of our wine club, they live in spring and you will meet them a little later on in today's show. Cheers. Cheers and cheers to that. Cheers to you on this Wednesday, which is, you know, basically the day before Thursday, which Thursday's Friday Eve and then there's Friday. So it's basically Friday. So, you know, today I had workers in my house because oh, I'm getting a new closet. Oh I, gosh, I, I have the smallest closet, okay? It's like I live in a dorm or I'm in like a studio apartment in New York. We live in an older home. This is Texas. Why is your closet so small? I know. I, know. I just think I have a lot of stuff. Our but closet here is larger than my home was in L.A. No, uh, right. Well, <laughs> my our uh, home before was definitely my closet was bigger. This is just a smaller space. Okay. And Orlando just says that I have a lot of stuff. I do, but I'm finally getting something that's, you know, designed for my needs, basically. Which is fantastic. It's fantastic. Except you have to remove everything out of said space for them to come in and remove the existing closet. And then they have to, you know, wall prep and do all that. So basically that's what I did yesterday is I took everything out. Shoot, I mean... Everything. And you just piled it up everywhere. It's everywhere. And remember, Oscar's in the house, so I can't leave anything on the floor. Everything's got to be put up, and, you know, you have to be very meticulous about what you're doing. Yeah. So workers come today, very professional, amazing job, but I'm having to kind of go up and down because I'm showering in the boys' shower. I'm getting ready there. I'm not getting ready while this man is working in the closet and didn't want to walk around in my robe while I'm getting dressed, you know, all of those things. It's your house. Do what you want. I know, but I wanted to be in my space, you know, let him work, and okay. I gathered and moved all my clothes around. So I put my dress on, and I was walking around the house, and Orlando said that he went, the guy went to go eat lunch. Oh, Okay, so now we're, we're at home. We're, at, we're in the house together, and this is great. And I, could, I saw the guy outside, okay. and then I start debating on what shoe I was going to wear with my dress today. So I start kind of doing my thing, and, I, and then I'm figuring out earrings. I, I basically went down this rabbit it's hole. It's quite a process. Major process. But I heard the door open. Oscar's not there today. He's at, he's at puppy camp today. Um, but I heard the door open, and then I heard someone talking, and then I heard shoes, which... You know, it was Orlando. So I, he, he walks in the room, and I said, "Oh, hey, uh, would you mind zipping up my dress, please? Would you?" Would, and I hear nothing. Do right? not tell and me. I, and I hear, uh, and I'm like, "Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you were my husband." <laughs> sure, you did. Would you mind zipping up my dress? <laughs> I had no idea it was the did worker. Did you die? I did. I said, "Oh my gosh, I am." You're so blushing. Sorry. <laughs> I thought he was eating his lunch. 
much. <laughs> wow. Oh, boy. Wow. So was he good looking? He had a mask on, but yeah, he was nice looking. Oh, well, no wonder you asked him to zip <laughs> up your dress. <laughs> Purely accidental. I know. I know. I mean, I guess it's better than asking him to unzip your dress. Right? That would have been a whole different a, story. A whole different story. <laughs> I'm going to change into something else now. Oh, That's happened to me, goodness. like in the grocery store, when I turn to get something and then I turn back and I think it's Brandon, yes. but he's moved on and it's someone, it's someone else. someone else. It's happened several times, but never in my own home. <laughs> I thought he was still outside eating his lunch. I thought he, you know, was taking five. I didn't realize he came back in and... And right at this moment, he's probably telling his friends, you won't believe what that drunk girl from Channel 2 <laughs> asked me to do. She wanted me to zip up her dress. <laughs> I mean, could you even believe it? Well, yeah, as long as you're paying him. You might as well. Might... <laughs> Work on the closet, help you get dressed. Yeah. Wow, okay. Don't be slacking on the job. <laughs> no. Oh, my gosh. That's really good. Typical Courtney, right? That's really good. Wow, well, cheers to strangers. <laughs> Helping you get dressed. I thought it was weird because there was a long pause, you know? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with the question? Oh, you know, I'm no. fiddling with the shoes, so I wasn't really paying attention. Oh, wow. I, I can know. only imagine. <laughs> well, I'm glad you made it through that scenario. Um, so I brought some lunch today that is leftover from last night. Have you heard about this craze going around on TikTok? Which one? First of all, I don't know how to use TikTok. I do watch puppy videos that Brandon sends to me. That's pretty much all I do now when I need a little pick-me-up. I send them to you all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So on TikTok, you can watch puppy videos, you can watch people being stupid, you can learn how to dance. Well, apparently, you can also learn how to cook. And Brandon has been trying these recipes at home, and I'm like, where did you get this? Right. TikTok. So there's this recipe. I know the video's kind of sideways, but it's this is how it was posted on TikTok. So it's a baked feta pasta recipe made with cherry tomatoes, okay. that feta cheese, of course, garlic, basil, olive oil, salt, salt and pepper. So pretty basic ingredients. And you just put the the the, um, the block of feta in the middle. In, in the middle, okay. and then you bake it in the oven, right? And then you add the pasta, and you stir it up, and, and sort of make it all together. So Brandon saw this, and he wanted to try it. Well, my mouth is watering. Blocks of feta are now sold out in grocery stores everywhere because this has become so popular. There's a feta shortage? Well, I, I'm not sure if we would officially call it a shortage, but look how delicious. It looks really good. Yeah, so this is, uh, let's see, whose video is this? She looks good eating that too. She's Jessica Wu. Yeah, Jessica Wu. This is her video. She has almost 300,000 views, I guess, on this video. Okay. But this is one of, I mean, there are all kinds of videos with this specific recipe out there. And when he went to, went to the grocery store, there weren't blocks of feta, so he Did just had to crumbled? use crumbled, which you can't bake as long. You have yeah. to just add it after the fact. But I gotta tell you, it was delicious. It was so good. You would love it. You guys would love it. And he did a little uh, orquete pasta oh, yeah. for it, those little round ears. Mm -hmm. ears. And it was delicious. So I'm a believer now, and this is one of many recipes he has found on TikTok. What I think is so great about it is it's quick, it's simple, it's one pot. It's, you know, if you're not great in the kitchen, anybody could really do it. Yeah. It's Yummy. so it's super easy. You saw okay, it. just bake it. and stir. I'm going to try it. Okay. Okay, so some sad news. I'm sure that you guys already heard about this. This happened about 11.30 this morning uh, about the state of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. Yeah. It was pushed back, of course, to May, and now it's canceled indefinitely due to, of course, ongoing COVID concerns. Um, it, it's, it, the whole thing's canceled. Downtown Rodeo, the parade, the trail ride activities, Rodeo Uncorked, Roundup Best Bites competition, mm. and, of course, barbecue. Um, no live concerts or carnival. And, you know, besides the scholarships and the kids uh, that benefit from all of this, my heart goes out to all of those people, um, but also the vendors. Yeah. I remember last year it was March 12th uh, in the midst of Rodeo when it canceled yeah, and it all those started. vendors lost again. And, and really they haven't been able to make as much as they have over the last year. Um, and I know there was an online forum that happened last year that people just kind of started. Um, of course, Nutcracker Market went completely virtual, done right. by the Nutcracker, uh, by the Ballet Guild. So uh, no word on what's going to happen, but I'm hoping something can happen for the vendors. Well, I was thinking, if I felt like I was punched in the gut today when I yeah. heard this news. And obviously, with the COVID numbers, everyone can understand why this is happening, right? 100%. Why it was canceled. And I remember last year when the news broke, I mean, Rodeo was canceled. You all remember this. And that 
that day, NRG Park had to be cleared out by yes. 4 p.m. Lauren Kelly was there doing a story. Vendors were in tears because truly for so many of these people, this is the time of year, this is the event where they're able to make their money. If you yeah, ever get your boots shined, you know, people come in from Arkansas and Louisiana and they, and they stay in a camper and all month long they're there shining people's boots because it is the most money they make all year. So we, our hearts go out to yeah. so many people who this is a huge thing for them and will dramatically impact people's ability just to, to pay their bills. Absolutely. Uh, and it's an, a huge impact for the city as well. Um, and we can't wait for this to regroup. Of course, I believe, is it the, the following year is the big anniversary for the rodeo? I think so. Yeah. Is it 90? 90 years, yeah. So we will celebrate big in 2022. Yeah, and our news department will have more on the story on KPRC 2 News at 4 o'clock. And in the meantime, a lot of these vendors, I know they've had to fast track sure. figuring out how to sell things online. And so we always try to look for the sil silver lining, but we definitely want to acknowledge it's a very hard day for a lot of folks in around Houston. All right, let's shift gears. How does that sound? Sounds good. To on me. this Wine Club Wednesday, coming up on Houston Life, nominations for this year's Golden Globes were announced this morning, of course. Did any of your favorite shows make the cut? Plus, Joe Sam is giving us a look inside of Houston's first black first black missionary Baptist church as we celebrate black history. Houston Life will be back in two minutes. It is officially award season, and this year the shows will go on virtually, of course, and that includes the 78th annual Golden Globe Awards. This morning, Sarah Jessica Parker and Taraji P. Henson announced the nominees live on the Today Show, and streaming content, no surprise, got a lot of love. Oh, it sure did. No surprise at all. Um, my favorite, which I just finished um, about a week ago, The Flight Attendant. Okay, I've been hearing a lot of buzz about this. Oh, it's so good. Of course, Emily in Paris, great binger. The Crown, love it all. Did you finish The Crown? No. The Diana Yee. What's wrong oh, with you? Wow. I know we we have not really seen oh. a whole lot of anything. Every year during award season, I always um, feel like I need to hurry and catch up and watch everything. Um, Blanks Creek, the show yes. that received so many Emmy so good. nominations, and uh, The Prom. I'm a huge fan of The Prom. I love the message. The singing and dancing is really fun. We have a couple friends involved in the show. Remember Chris Kettner, yes. who was here when Heather McMahon was on the show. Chris and Heather worked very closely together on many projects. Uh, Chris is a Tony-nominated producer for it's working so on The awesome. Prom on Broadway. So it's great to see it go from Broadway to streaming, and also great that you know there was a time when only official television and official yes. film were eligible to be nominated and now of course all of these streaming shows are getting their moment and they should uh it's really great you definitely need to see the flight attendant i'm so happy for emily in paris too because it's one of those really cute the fashion's amazing so and i will really catch excited. up on the prom i promise yes. it might take me a year i mean the, the crown. crown it's okay see the problem I don't even know the names of the shows. <laughs> we do want to hear from you. We want to know, what should we be watching? What was your favorite TV show or film or streaming last year and why? We're going to get to some of your responses later on in today's show. And don't forget, you can watch the 78th Golden Globes, hosted by Tina Fey and Amy Poehler, right here on KPRC2. That's on February 28th, starting at 7 p.m. One will be in New York, one will be in L.A. Be okay. great. And Joe Sam joins us now in studio. Joe, what have you been watching? So I've been watching these really creative superstition type shows because I love them all. I love Halloween, but this brought it into that Harry Potter moment. But they're taking Harry Potter and they're turning it away from the witches and the wizards into the fairies. Oh. So this is like, it's not your typical Tinkerbell. This is taking it up a notch. So What's the name some, of this one? This is Fate. Okay. So F-A-T-E, and I would highly suggest people to go and check this out because it is a lot of action, a lot of thriller going on, some mystery, and I'm telling you, the actors and actresses in here Amazing. It looks Love like them all. the effects are pretty good too. <sighs> so good. It is something that I was binge watching. I watched the whole thing in one day. Oh my in word! One that good. Day. It's that good. And I never would have thought that I would have liked something with fairies in it. Yeah. But Here hey, you go. It's, it, there it is. The Netflix are they're doing their thing. When Absolutely. I was a little kid, I wanted to grow up to be a fairy. And look <laughs> what happened. Are cool. No, I'm kidding. But magical powers, though. I think anything with magical powers, like seeing that girl with a fire in her hand. Yes. 
Pretty cool. Each Very one cool. of them can control a certain element. So okay. they have water fairies, fire fairies, earth fairies, mind fairies, which is what I would have chose. Okay. So, yeah. I like the pitch, Joe. There Very we nice. go. And you know, we're going to be turning things now to black history. June 19th, 1866, slaves were freed in Texas, allowing a small group of them to organize the first African-American Baptist church in Houston. I got the great privilege to talk with its current pastor to find out just how special the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church is to the city of Houston. This church is significant in black history in that it was founded by ex-slaves. Now what's really interesting is that it was only seven months after emancipation uh, proclamation was received here um, in June 19th, uh, two years later, that seven months after we got the news, those gentlemen, those people established that church just seven months after that. As I was looking around and seeing the church, there's four significant people that are in some of those beautiful windows. Yes. Tell us about those people. These people were the original founder, uh, our, our pastor, Jack Yates. Those men represent Antioch's first four pastors of the church, and they have been there as a symbol of hope and just uh, an idea of where we started. These pews were made by ex-slaves and are designed specifically for the sanctuary. What do you think the church does for people who are going there, knowing that rich history that it brings to this area? I think it does for people today as it did people of yesteryear. Uh, that church served as a beacon of light for the people in the area then as it does today. You know, Joe, uh, Antioch just celebrated its 155th anniversary. Wow. This city is 183 years old. So that, that says how deeply rooted this church is into this city. What do you want people to walk away once they finally leave the church on any given Sunday or any given day that you guys are doing sermons? Yes, our message to, to, to the people of this city and those of them who are following us on social media is a message of hope in that we have been solid in this city, we have been solid in our ministry, and, and that little small patch of grass uh, that we have established 155 years ago is still doing the same things it did then. We're educated, uh, we've got social uh, programs going on, we're feeding the homeless and clothing the poor. So it's those same things, that, and we invite all people to come down and worship and be a part of the ministry that we have at Antioch. Reverend, thank you so much for spending time with us today and telling us all the great things about the church. And Joe, will I see you on church, church on this summit? You will. You definitely will. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I got to go get my Sunday's best suit attire so I can go and make it to church on Sunday. Now, the church will be hosting its annual Black History service on the 28th of this month, starting at 1030 a.m., and will have a special performance by the Voices of Houston. I'll have a link on our website, HoustonLife.tv, where you can learn more about that special service and the church's rich history. And Courtney and Derek, it's shocking to me because I always run downtown because I live like three minutes away from the church, and I would always pass it and see it right there. Never knew that it has so much history right here in Houston, downtown, in a beautiful skyline behind it. Such a wonderful church. There's something about walking into that space, mm -hmm. into uh, the church. It's it's calming, but it, you you almost get the chills walking yeah. in there. I've been in there several times, and mm -hmm. it's just a beautiful building. Knowing that the pews were all built by slaves and the walls that were put up, it really does connect you back to the history. And like yes. you said, you get goosebumps when you're walking in. I love it. It's a beautiful building, a beautiful story. What do you have coming up tomorrow, Joe? So tomorrow is another great story connecting you right back here to Houston's Black History. We're going to be talking about the journey through black history as we continue to figure out what's happening here in Houston at Olive Wood Cemetery. Now, they of course served as the only location for slave burials in Houston back in 1875. We'll find out the importance of the people resting there and what so the cemetery is actually axing people from the, communi the community rather to keep its history preserved. Absolutely. Great Very space. nice. Joe Absolutely. Sam, thanks, thanks so much. A lot of great stuff happening here. I can't wait for the story tomorrow. Us thanks too. so much, Joe. We'll see you then. All right, still ahead on Houston Life, KPRC2's Brandon Walker shares the story of how one professor is changing students' lives in our Voices of Houston Black History series. And after the break, the truth about slugging. Is the TikTok skincare trend safe? A dermatologist is weighing in when Houston Life returns.
Okay, we covered the food on TikTok. Now we've got another latest trend from TikTok. It's called slugging, and it's a beauty hack. I really thought this involved leeches or snails. I had no idea, but it's said to give you hydrated, dewy skin by applying petroleum jelly at night before bed, basically Vaseline, right? Okay, but is your skin right for the slug life? Dr. Sherry Ingerham, one of our favorites, joins us now with the do's and don'ts of slugging. My goodness, Dr. Ingerham, okay, I feel like this sort of goes against all the things we've always learned about what to put on our faces. Why would people be doing this? Smearing Vaseline or petroleum jelly before bed? Well, you know, it's interesting. Dermatologists actually love Vaseline. It's pure. It's it's purified white petrolatum. So it's actually medical or cosmetic grade. So it's non-comedogenic. So even though you might think it is comedogenic, it's actually non-comedogenic. So we actually love putting it on open wounds. Now, what some people are doing on TikTok is they're covering their whole face with it at night, which as you know, is the slugging because it makes you slimy like a slug. And the reason people are doing this is because it adds an occlusive barrier to the skin. So it traps in moisture. So so if you're prone to really dry skin, it can feel good. But if you're prone to acne or have oily skin, I wouldn't recommend it because you're gonna trap in oil and bacteria and you may aggravate your acne just because you're trapping in things that shouldn't be there. Okay, so it's acting as a barrier, but I mean, how do we get it off? It seems like if we have Vaseline or petroleum jelly in our hands, it's difficult to wash off. It actually washes off pretty well. So if you wanted to slug, you wanted to try this trend, I would say don't do it every day, maybe try twice a week. You'd wanna cleanse your face with a gentle cleanser like micellar water first, because you wanna remove all dirt and impurities and makeup from the skin. Then you would apply your nice layer of Vaseline and go to bed. When you wake up in the morning, you can take your micellar water again and remove the Vaseline and then have a glow and some good moisture. But again, I wouldn't do it every day because if you do it every day, you throw off your body's own ability to maintain its skin barrier. So you don't wanna overdo it, everything in moderation. Now, some people don't wanna use Vaseline. It's too heavy or occlusive. So I, I have a lot of patients that are oilier or tend to be acne prone. And those patients, I would say, get a barrier that's designed to do the same thing, but not as heavy and greasy, which is something like SkinCeuticals Triple Lipid that's full of the same lipids you're looking for, but it's not going to make you feel greasy and stick to your sheets as much. Yeah, I got. I have to admit, that, so we saw a video of our producer, Beatrice, doing this at home, rubbing that Vaseline. We just saw that moments ago. Is it only for people who are feeling like their skin is, is dry? very dry? Sorry, I'm, I guess I'm missing. Why would people do this in the first place? Place, instead of just using like a heavier, like a CeraVe cream that you buy from the right. drugstore? So that's a great question. I would advise people to use something like CeraVe, but there is this perception that it is a huge anti-aging boon. So I've had patients tell me the secret to their grandma's skin is she puts Vaseline on every oh. night. And so what I tell them is Vaseline, Aquaphor, CeraVe healing ointment, these are all great barrier products to trap in moisture, but they don't really have an anti-aging benefit. So if if you want to use it as a clear coat at the end of the day, you could put your anti-aging moisturizer on or your CeraVe and put the Aquaphor Vaseline or CeraVe ointment on top and lock in the moisture. But in and of itself, it doesn't have any miracle anti-aging benefits. Mm. It's just a really good occlusive to keep moisture on the skin. Okay, and again, if you are going to slug, you do this at night, you're not walking around with Vaseline all over your face right, all, all day. Over your face <laughs> the day. Am I doing it right? I know. <laughs> Before work. Try it, but I I wouldn't do it every day. There are so many better things for your skin, but if you want to try this trend, there's really no downside to it unless you're acne prone, in which it may aggravate your acne. Well, you're always the one that we lean on for the answers. Dr. Sherry Ingerham, it's great to see you. Thank you for having me. And to connect with Dr. Ingerham, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. Okay. Very interesting. I still have so many questions. Still to come, have you ever tried vegan wine? It is a thing, and today we will try bottles that are under 15 bucks. Wine Club Wednesday is coming up later. And we're going to get a check of what Keith, Christine, and Frank have coming up for the news at 4. That's when Houston Life returns in two minutes.
Well, welcome back to Houston Life. Courtney and Derek back with you at 3.30. Yeah, earlier in today's show, we asked you in honor of the Golden Globe nominations announced earlier this morning, what was your favorite TV show or movie or streaming show of last year and why? Susan writes in, you're going to love this, Courtney, The Crown. It maybe made me Google so much about the royal family, even though the show might have been dramatized, actually fact-checking it was eye-opening, and I am from the UK. Oh, cool. Fantastic. Love The Crown. Jennifer writes in our favorite Tiger King. When I watched that, I forgot all about COVID. You know what? It makes you feel very normal about your own life when you watch that show. Kristen writes in, my octopus teacher, oh my gosh, that. from Netflix was life-changing. Kristen, I will never eat octopus again because of that documentary. I found it heartwarming and That's fascinating. That's what everybody says. Yeah, I haven't Beautiful seen it. Beautiful film. Lovely. Okay, and Pat writes in, Houston Life, because y'all bring a smile and LOL. Oh, Pat. Aww. Why are you being so nice to us? What do you want? I'm <laughs> kidding. That's lovely. Thanks I love so much it. for watching. All right. Well, let's check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look at what they have coming up at 4 o'clock. Hey, I agree with Pat. Oh. Though I'm curious where my Yellowstone fans are at. <gasps> love Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Oh, man, I can't Great. wait for the next season. And Great you know, A lot of people are saying they were kind of snubbed by the Globes. A little bit. A little bit of a shutout mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Well. Right. <laughs> you gotta watch it. I know. If you've, if you, that we've been talking about it for months now, Frank. You watch Yellowstone yet? I've never seen it. With but Kevin I've Costner. Never, but, but I've never seen the uh, Winter Is Coming one either. Oh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> Game oh of my Thrones. God, where's my sword? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I have not. But there you go. You, but it, you got a lot to watch. I have a lot. To well, watch. and you can deliver a good forecast. I'm watching Your Honor right now. That. I've heard. Oh, I've heard yes. that one's good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. And The Undoing was good with Nicole Kidman. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that was good. So, uh, yeah. so I do watch TV. I'm not just <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> Advocates camera, look at that. A little uh, more cloud cover today, not quite as just crystal blue as we saw yesterday, but not a bad day. 68 right now. 70 in Sugarland. These southeast winds continue at 64 on the island. Tomball's at 71, 69 Conroe, 67 Pearland. So it's really pleasant. And as we go into this evening, it's going to stay pleasant. Look at those numbers right there in the upper 60s to the mid 60s, 63 at 7 p.m. So get that dog out there. High pressure continues for us. But things are going to be changing. That's because of this front. That arrives on Thursday evening. So here's a look at the timing on that. I'll tell you, there's not a lot to it. I'll go over the exact timing coming up at 4. We'll also talk about rain amounts. But you can see there's a thin line of showers coming through Thursday night about 9 o'clock. And behind it, cool weather. And that's just the beginning of it. So enjoy today and tomorrow because that's going to end pretty quickly. This is tomorrow morning. We're right around 60, 62. As we go into the afternoon, I'm looking for 80 in spots. So it's going to be really nice tomorrow. Perfectly warm Thursday, but then a colder weekend. And then after that, a really cold next week. So it kind of goes downhill all the way. We'll have a look at the today coming up. Very yeah. good. Frank, don't feel bad. I've not seen Game of Thrones either. I th keep thinking that Keith's oh, going to so disown me. Oh, so that's a club. Okay. If you have two, it's a club. <laughs> See? I guess so. <laughs> the majority. A very nerdy club, just saying. But, <laughs> right. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> all right, well, I'll give you a look at some of the other stories that we were covering this afternoon. And Courtney and Derek uh, have already mentioned it, but this year's Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo has been canceled. It had already been pushed back to May. Now it is officially not happening. We've got live team coverage, including reaction and the big impacts to folks who make a living off events like the rodeo. Yeah, plus new information today about people who have had the coronavirus and how long they're immune from the virus, or in other words, how long those antibodies last. And the Super Bowl is this weekend, if you hadn't heard, and we know there are quite a few people who watch the game for more than just the game. They watch it for those commercials. We're going to give you a sneak peek at some of the ads that you will see this weekend. Weekend. I wonder if Joe Exotic is going to find someone's going to find a creative oh. way to get him into those those commercials. We can know, only we'll hope, you guys. Maybe <laughs> straight from jail. Hey, uh, Keith Garvin, <laughs> that nerd club you just mentioned. Yes. Three people in that club because I have Derek. not seen Game of Thrones. Either. Okay, See? Courtney, Courtney, bring you him know, in. You know, you know, I'm with you, Boo. I know. Come on now. <laughs> yes. We, it just we, seems like such a commitment at this point. How many episodes in season? Katie hasn't seen it. Our like floor director. Seventy-eight or something. So, See? We're, so the se six or seven of us, we're gonna have a binge weekend. We're gonna sit down. We're gonna have swords. A binge we're, we're weekend. Have we would have yes. to binge an entire year to get through all the seasons. <laughs> Christine, you can do it. I have faith in you. Okay. 
All right. We'll see if I can take that first step. Winter Great. will come, yes. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you at 4 o'clock. Okay. Keith, I'm not going to forget what you said. It was very mean. Um, all right. We're going to shift gears now. KPRC has been honoring black history with a closer look at people making a huge difference in our community. And today we're highlighting an assistant dean of the School of Communication at Texas Southern University. KPRC 2's Brandon Walker has a look at her impact on our students in today's Voices of Houston, proudly brought to you by HEB. Around the world, around our community, this is KTSU 2 News for Monday, February 1st, 2021. Maya South, Turner has tracked the headlines for as long as she can first. remember. I knew for from a very um, young age that I wanted to do journalism. I've always been very into politics. Okay. Just think about the current events was actually going on in our community. Turner is a senior enrolled in Texas Southern University School of Communication. Got to make sure that people know what's happening locally first. Much of her direction, what she's learned, has come from Professor Serbino Sandifer Walker. I love this woman. Um, my mother knows for a fact that Professor Walker is my second mom. She stood the test of time from when she first got into media to now, she's still doing it and creating the future generations of broadcasters. It is so humbling for me. Professor Walker has taught at TSU since the 1990s, although her career teaching the news began by reporting it, including interviewing Reverend Jesse Jackson during his presidential run. Like yesterday, it was 1984. <laughs> This is KTSU 2's and I'm Kennedy Robinson. A lot about the craft has changed since then, but the basics from the studio to the street remain, as does Professor Walker's focus on her students who this month are telling stories of black history, Houston's history for KPRC 2. I actually was able to tell a story of one of my relatives. She's passed now and she was actually the first black head librarian. Around the world, around our community. My only goal is to help them to become the person that they want to become. And so we work very hard at it. Very, very nice. And speaking of TSU, this week, KPRC2 began a special month-long partnership with Texas Southern University to honor Houston's black history. Every day in February, students from TSU School of Communication and members of KTSU2, the voice online team, are sharing stories and perspective. And today on Click to Houston, you will find the personal essay, A Black Woman's Crown Should Be Celebrated. The essay is about hair and the journey toward embracing one's identity. The author of today's essay is TSU student Lydia Dillard, who is studying, studying journalism with a focus on advertising and public relations. Her goal is to one day open her own PR firm. Very nice. I'm sure she will do that. And you can head to clicktohouston.com slash black history for more articles all month long. All right. Coming up on Houston Life. Wine Club members Andrew and Kia, there they are, along with their dog Lola. They're standing by. We'll meet them in just a moment when we'll uncork two wine favorites you can find locally. Houston Life will be right back. Hi, Lola. Welcome back to Houston Life. Many of you may be gearing up for the big game this weekend, maybe serving some wings, barbecue, and burgers. And why not kickstart the game with some wine instead of beer that matches up to those game day foods? Our HEB wine steward is standing by with her bottle of recommendations. But first, let's get to know today's wine club members from Spring, Texas. We'd like to say hello to Andrew and Kia Gutter. Welcome to the show, wine club members. Cheers. Hi, Thank, Thank you for having, having us. us. Of course, cheers to you. Okay, we want to get to know you guys. Um, I feel like this is a really good story. We know that you live in spring, um, but the two of you met over six bottles of wine and something involving Moulin Rouge. What's, what's <laughs> happening? Okay, so we didn't meet over six bottles of wine. He told me he loved me over six bottles of wine, which oh. now I think about it. Like, mm. um, but... <laughs> But we drank a lot. Um, we had champagne and wine in Moulin Rouge. And uh, yep. we were in a jazz club. Yep. And on bottle number six, Lombards. he was like, he told the DJ to play this song. And then all of a sudden he's singing to me. Mm. And then he tells me he loves me from the, the entire uh, club. 
Oh, that is so romantic. We should yeah. point out too, this was at Moulin Rouge, the actual Moulin had, Rouge in Paris. The actual Moulin Rouge. It's not like you were watching in the movie. Paris. Right. <laughs> no, not watching the movie in Paris, France. In Paris. Correct. And we okay. went to a jazz club called Duke Lombard's. A really famous. It was awesome. It's a great story. Kia, you're from D.C., Andrew from San Francisco originally. When yeah. you met in Houston almost six years ago, uh, you dated a few years, you got married three years ago. And I understand, um, look at all these great photos of you too. I know you love to travel and COVID has been tough. Uh, eventually we'll all get out there. But I understand you've been watching Houston Life since the mall days? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Since like literally, almost, probably I think it may have been day one. I was even in the mall a couple of times shopping um, and I had just moved here. And I remember it and I just, it, I remember watching Houston Life and being like, learning about the city through the show and I, D I DVR you all every single day. I watch it back. He watches in the background with me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That is yeah, and so I've been sweet. here since 2002 <laughs> and uh, I've always enjoyed Derek, especially because you're a savage dude. Like, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a savage. I, I love your personality. So you're awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Andrew. I appreciate that so much. I got to tell you, the mall days feel like a long time ago. And mm -hmm. uh, things all changed, of course, when we finally convinced Courtney to come back to, to Channel 2. Oh, I know. I was excited. I love Courtney. I love your outfits. Oh, I follow you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you guys so much. I'm feeling the love today for sure. And I'm going to start calling Derek Savage from now on. I love it. Um, can we talk about Lola? Is Lola still on your lap? You have your sweet dog, Lola, who's also a fashionista. She is a little fashionista oh, right now. She's a hot dog. <laughs> she had her, so she had her teeth taken out yesterday, but she's oh. got her little dress on today. Oh, stop it. She, she had some dental work all. done. Yeah. So she has quite the wardrobe. I'm sorry that her teeth were removed. Yeah, we had, we rescued her two years ago, and so um, they she had some issues, but she's all better now. So she's good. She's a little drugged up today. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she looks very cozy there, right there yeah, on your lap. Okay, yes. well, listen, this is perfect that uh, the six bottle of wine thing was the night Andrew confessed his love to you, Kia. I love that it's coming full circle. So stay right there because after the break, we're going to pop some bottles. Perfect for the big game. We've already, let's be honest, we've already popped the bottles. With our HEB wine steward, we've got a white and a red. And plus, how you can become a wine club member yourself. That's all when Houston Life returns. Cheers. Yeah. Welcome back to Houston Life. So we all probably know the big game is just around the corner. And instead of pairing football with beer, why not elevate your game day by serving a bit of wine? A little elevation is good for everybody. We've been hanging out with Kia and Andrew, Houston Life viewers and members of our wine club poured by HEB. And we are now joined by HEB wine store, Jamie Schomberger. Great to see you, Jamie, and everyone. Hey, we are so excited. Um, first, tell us about the HEB wine favorites program, Jamie, and how today's wine wines basically got on that list? So HEB wine favorites are specific wines that have been picked by our buyers that we consider to over deliver on the quality and flavor for their price. Um, there are over 900 HEB wine favorites in any given store and they range in price anywhere from $8 to $600. So you can find a wine favorite for any flavor or price point that you need. You can find a bottle of wine at HEB for $600? That's incredible. Yes, you can, and I'll be happy to point one out for you. Well, that's a, a fun fact. And a $600 <laughs> bottle of wine. <laughs> You'll find me in the $8 section, I promise you that. Hey, Jamie, a bit about you before we jump into this. Graduated 2009 from U of H with a degree in wine and spirits management. I didn't even yes. know that was a thing. That's incredible. 14 plus years in wine retail, 10 years with HEB. And, uh, you know, we always love learning more about wines. Absolutely. So let's just jump right in. Tell us what you brought us today. You want to start with the, uh, with the white or the red? We'll start with the white. Okay. Um, so this is the Boulder Bank Sauvignon Blanc. It's a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc from the Marlborough region. It's probably the most well-known region for Sauvignon Blanc in the whole southern hemisphere and i love this wine it's so bright and refreshing it's uh got great acidity to it as well and it drinks so easy this is definitely a wine that we would call a patio pounder in my Ooh. house 
And I love this too. You also say, Jamie, this is great with like creamy dishes, um, yes. like dips or even spicy foods like wings. Absolutely. Anytime you're having anything creamy, heavy, or cheesy, I always recommend a wine with a nice bright acidity because that acid in the wine will cut through the heavy cream on your palate and refresh you for the next bite. That's so interesting. Also, it seems like, remember a few years ago when food started going organic and there was this big push for organic foods? This is sustainably farmed, certified vegan. Is this a trend yeah. you think we're going to see more of? Yeah, uh, vegan wines have been around for many, many years, but I think more and more wineries are starting to shout that out because they do find that customers are gravitating toward it. I think this is a beautiful wine. It's sort of an all-season wine. Uh, Kia and Andrew, let's get your feedback. This is delicious. Um, I'm li like, she said it was a patio pounder. I'm like throwing it back, trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to keep it classy, but not going to be. So, <laughs> it's really good. It's really good. I'm really a, a red wine drinker, but considering this, it's uh, fresh. It's very fresh. It's fresh. Very fresh. Ooh, yeah. yeah. I agree, and what I love about it is the fresh price at 13 bucks. so that's a winner in my book. That is a fresh price Absolutely. indeed, Courtney. All right, Jamie, let's move on to the red blend. This is a 2018 Santa Julia Mountain Blend. Yes, yeah, so this is uh, Santa Julia Winery from Mendoza, Argentina. And mm. what I love about this red blend is it's a blend of Malbec and Cabernet Franc. Uh, Cabernet Franc is not as well known as Malbec, but what this does to the wine is it gives it a little more depth and body. This is a great, rich, bold wine that's still smooth on the finish. And anytime you're having grilled foods, hamburgers, Texas barbecue or brisket, this is a wine I reach for all the time. It's just a fantastic pairing. This, you had me at Malbec. I love a good blend. And when you talk about the Cab Franc, that's what's basically giving it the richness of this wine. Yes, and that darker color as well. That comes from the Cabernet Franc. Thirteen mm. dollars, I think, is is great too. I mean, it's you know people talk about these really expensive wines. Just drink what you like, right? Mm -hmm. So thirteen dollars seems like a great price point. Uh, Key and Andrew, before we let you go, what are your thoughts? This is great. I'm thinking like we could grill some steak tonight. <laughs> yeah. it. Delicious. For me, it's my second glass, so I should tell you enough. <laughs> Cheers, y'all. Yeah, Cheers. Cheers. Well, thanks so much for being part of Houston Life's Wine Club, poured by HEB. Both wines, 13 bucks. And as a reminder, you can find today's featured wines at any HEB. And Jamie, thank you so much for your time. Key and Andrew and little Lola there. We'll see you again very soon. Cheers, y'all. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Cheers. Thank you. And a reminder that if you would like to join our Houston Life Wine Club, poured by HEB, just visit our website, HoustonLife.tv, to register. You will have access to exclusive giveaways, and you'll even have a chance to be part of our virtual tastings like the one we just did. Both of these are winners, for they sure. Are. Putting it on the list this week. After the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show. But first, let's check in with Kevin Frazier for a preview of what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hi, Kevin. Derek and Courtney tune into ET tonight for the Golden Globe nominations, the surprises and the snubs, and our interview with the nominees. That's tonight at 6.30 right here on KPRC2. Now sit tight. Houston Life will be right back. tomorrow on Houston Life, we're going to chat with Katie's critically acclaimed soprano about the latest celebration of black artists in opera. Cannot wait for that. Plus, meet the owner of the vintage camper turned mobile bar, mm. now shaking up some gorgeous cocktails. I love it. And earlier in the show, guys, we asked you, what was your favorite TV show or movie of 2020 and why? And we're going to start with Tracy. We played bingo with Tracy. Hi, we're Tracy. Instagram friends. And she says, Courtney's recommendation justified my husband and I loved it. Ooh, that was a good binger. I need to watch it. He's eye candy, too. Though. I'm a little behind. Oh, an incentive mm -hmm. to watch. Christine writes in Yellowstone, what's not to love? Yes. Yeah, people are buzzing about this. Oh, it's so good. You would love it. It's a great story. It really is. But the scenery is amazing. The Undoing, yes, Liz. We watched it, too. Two of my all-time favorite actors. And The Nice Escape. Um, and the best was... 
the um, update to the father of the bride. It made her cry. Yes, I forgot oh, about that. That's sweet. That was so sweet. Listen, yeah, the undoing was good. We love our viewers so much, and we love you even more for not recommending The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. You know some shows, like, you just feel stupider when you watch them? Oh, my gosh. It's a train wreck. We watch it every week. <laughs> you actually watch it? We do. Orlando and I. I swear it kills your brain cells. Oh, it totally kills your brain cells, but sometimes you need mindless things to get through the day at the end of the day. Cheers, friend. No comment. <laughs> Happy Wine Club Happy Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> I mean, I'm from Salt Lake City. So you is know Orlando. This. Oh, gosh. I know. It's need, a train wreck. We need to there is one, one lady housewives. that has like seven assistants and a bodyguard. Why? Do rich people impress you? No, it's just a train wreck. We need to put a pin in this conversation. Houston Life is out of time. Hi, Keith, Christine. Hey. Sorry, we're going off the rails here. You guys, I love when you guys go off the rails. <laughs> Our goal is just not, not, yeah. to, not to burn any brain cells. Can, can I add 90 Day Fiance? Even <laughs> oh, oh, Sorry. oh, oh Keith, yeah, I am I know, learning so know. much about you. You we're do not. not. Oh, no. It's confession time. I mean, I had, I had to get that off my chest. Is oh, it, though? Yes. Is it wow. confession time? <laughs> Watch that oh, show? What about Love at First Sight? Yeah. You watch that yeah. one? Yes, yes. Married I've, at First Sight. No. Or Married too. at First Sight. Married at First Sight, no. yeah. Can't do it. I do, I I've done either. that. Yeah, we, we need to sit down and talk. Off we're we're going to need like an, at least an hour to finish this. We're going to pull some chairs up here. Okay. We'll be waiting. All right. Speaking <laughs> of all good. Sounds good. All right.